Meet Dave Chappelle, a great impersonator of the wildest of characters. Crippo! It gives me wings! A man not afraid to make jokes about anyone or anything. There goes some gay guys. <laughs> hey! Look! There goes some more hood and kiss it. <laughs> a master at racial satire. We all go through something, but at least I can leave my backpack someplace. <laughs> if you Arab and forget the backpack, you got about 20 minutes before they send that robot to blow your shit up. Today, we will show you why there will never be another Dave Chappelle, uncovering how this young boy turned into a record-breaking cultural icon, won five Grammys, and became the most influential comedian of all time. David Kari Weber Chappelle was born into a Washington DC home where his mother worked for the Congolese government and his father was a professor of vocal performance. So when you combine this with the fact that his childhood idol was Eddie Murphy, it's no surprise Dave grew up to be a phenomenal comedian who used his voice to influence politics and stand up for what he believed in. Starting at only age 14, Chappelle was performing stand-up comedy at nightclubs in DC and progressed into full shows by only 17. I, mean, I, did, I was just trying to be funny, man. I walked through the thing and said, Boop. Then he said, I'm sorry, sir. You have to go back through. And I said, oh, <laughs> must have been my pistol. Uh! This practice at such a young age gave him an insane advantage over anyone who wanted to be a comedian at his age. Let me tell you something, LAPD overreact to everything. You ever see him in action? Just, oh, oh my goodness. Stop jaywalking. Before Dave even graduated high school, he made his professional debut, appearing on Apollo's Amateur Night. Because when Batman fought, those words <laughs> would go around that compile. Yeah. yeah, you guys might not believe this, but one time I got in a fight, and the guy was beating me up real bad. And I saw those words, man. <laughs> now, for a 17-year-old, this may have been a good performance. However, the crowd thought otherwise, and it ended up being a devastating experience for young Dave Chappelle. When I say I got booed off stage, God. I, I, I still remember that boo. I'd never been booed off stage before, but I just remember looking out and seeing like everybody Ooh, everybody. <laughs> this early setback didn't stop Dave, and like a true champion, Dave saw light in the darkness. That night was liberating because I failed so far beyond my wildest nightmares of failing that it was like, hey, they're all booing. My friends are here watching, my mom. This is not that bad. <laughs> and after that, I was fearless. Dave then moved to New York, and his career took off. His first big break came from his appearance on Deaf Comedy Jam. I used to bust them people's apartments, just psh, dominoes, freeze! <laughs> Put them on the floor, man, get on the floor, don't move! This boosted his popularity, but it was a combination of his talent, work ethic, and fearlessness, developed in previous years, that allowed him to rapidly rise to fame. He then set his first record as a comedian before turning 20. He's the youngest comedian in Star Search history. From Washington, D.C., here is Dave Chappelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And in the same year, he made his first movie appearance. Oh. Your bag just got punched twice. Thank you! After this, TV hosts were desperate to get him on their shows, and he soon became a regular guest on The Howard Stern and Conan O'Brien Show. I went to a strip club yesterday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> it's safe to say Dave was enjoying his success, and by 1996, he was fortunate enough to co-star with his childhood idol. Oh, shit. Ready to study on the streets! Oh, 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 come on, come on! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Being in a movie with Eddie Murphy was a childhood dream of his, and after this, 
Life only got better for Dave. He started writing and starring in his own movies, and continued growing in popularity. However, after a few years on top of the comedy world, Dave lost his father, and in 1998, he considered leaving the entertainment business as a whole. This hurt Dave deeply, because his father was very influential on him growing up, and helped him achieve his dream. Uh, one of the main pillars of his, uh, what do you call it, upbringing, was that the... Uh, you shouldn't really worry too much about what happens outside of yourself. Because what's happening inside of yourself is oftentimes uh, more important to yourself. But Dave showed his resilience. After many months of mourning and rethinking life, he came back stronger than ever, releasing his first comedy titled Killing Them Softly in 2000. I've been trying to tell brothers that every, every group of brothers should have at least one white guy in I'm serious, for safety. Because when the shit goes down, somebody's going to need to talk to the police. Dave was back and better. He had many more TV appearances and even launched his own show in 2003, changing his career forever. Chappelle Show. Chappelle Show. Chappelle Show. Chappelle Show. Let's start the show. The show blended sketch comedy with incisive social commentary, and he quickly became a cultural phenomenon. And all of a sudden I heard something go, Tom Murphy! <laughs> At its peak, the show attracted millions of viewers per episode. The second season had multiple episodes gaining over 3 million views. The show became so popular that Comedy Central offered Dave a $55 million contract plus a share of all DVD sales to produce more seasons. This made Dave one of the highest paid comedians of all time. However, this was a contract, not an upfront check, and Dave had to earn every cent. Only one year into the deal, Dave came to a harsh realization where he told the crowd, this show is ruining my life. I dislike working 20 hours a day and the popularity of the show is making it difficult for me to continue my stand-up career, which is the most important thing to me. The fame was getting to Dave and in 2005, he flew to South Africa weeks before season three was about to start. At the time, Comedy Central allegedly began reporting that Dave Chappelle was struggling with drug problems and they even changed his show's intro. I don't think he's coming. Oh. Let's start the show. They continued to air the show with pre-recorded, half-complete episodes, whilst Dave enjoyed solitude in South Africa and denied the claims made against him. He later reflected on his decision. People, when I like entertaining, and the higher up I go, for some reason, the less happy I am. I'm 32 and I went to Africa, so I can only imagine what happened if I was like 19 and had Chappelle's show. Or if I could even handle it, it's a, it's a tremendous responsibility having a show like that. This setback was bigger than anything Dave or any other comedian had ever faced before. He broke a $55 million contract and walked away from the entire entertainment industry. It seems wild, but Dave relates his experiences to the story of a pimp from the 1940s. There's a book to me that encapsulates my entire experience before I left the show. And the book is called Pimp. It's written by a guy named Iceberg Slim. It means that pimps understand there's a finite amount of bad shit a person can do before they'll lose their fucking mind. And a good pimp can look at a woman that he's never seen before and call it. They do it to you. Why the fuck you think most of us work from nine to five? It's nine to six might kill a bitch. <laughs> He may be onto something here, and I believe many other celebrities feel the same, but just aren't as bold as Dave is. That's the game. That's how the whole shit works, ladies. You understand? This bitch was at the end of the mileage. She was at 498. She ended up tricking for Iceberg for another six months. She must have turned another 200 tricks for him. Do you understand? Some cold shit. 
Whilst Dave was in Africa, he mourned his father's death from seven years earlier, since he said he never really got a chance to process it. Over the next ten years, Dave began performing comedy shows at random locations. In 2007, he set the stand-up endurance world record by performing for six hours and twelve minutes straight. It was during this period that he was able to rekindle his love for stand-up far away from Hollywood. What the fuck is happening here? No, he didn't want any money. He would just show up at shows. If he wanted to do a show, he would show up at a comedy club. No money. Just show up, do a show after the show is over. This time Dave had a different style that was even more captivating than before. He started falling back after a joke to emphasize how funny it was. This guy, they got a real live uh, paparazzi, I see you. <laughs> Founding Fathers of America when the Constitution was being written. You ready? Here it goes. Hurry up and finish that Constitution. I'm trying to get some sleep. Dave recently recalled another life-changing experience he faced during his 10 years on the road. I had a good run. I, I wiped out in Hartford, and that was all over the internet. That was the first time that thing had happened to me. Dave is referring to a show in Connecticut where performance caused the unthinkable. So what I'm supposed to say for 25 minutes, uh, actually, the next three minutes. Dave was far off his best, and the crowd knew. They got so frustrated with him that they eventually overpowered him and booed him until he gave up. Good lord, you got here before someone snipes me. They ended up booing him off stage, just like when he was 17, and, true to his champion spirit, just like before, he never quit. Dave made his comeback after a decade of random shows in comedy clubs and public parks. He reclaimed the spotlight with a world-class set on Saturday Night Live. The black president came out of nowhere like, come on everybody, let's start thinking about everyone else. Oh, I just got this money! I didn't even think it was possible! His appearances on Saturday Night Live and Netflix is a joke boosted his fame once again. He then went on to sign a new deal with Netflix where they would pay him $20 million for each special he released. And after walking away from a $55 million contract previously, Dave made sure to capitalize on this new opportunity and he produced hit after hit. How could you shake hands with that murderer? I said, Sharon, with all due respect, that murderer ran for over 11,000 yards. <laughs> Man, Donald Trump's gonna go to Washington and he's gonna fight for us. I'm standing there thinking in my mind, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> The star was back, and his Netflix specials ended up winning him five Grammys over five years. His shows are the most popular comedy sketches on Netflix as a joke. The world was beginning to remember just how great Dave Chappelle truly was, and this time he was even braver, allowing him to speak much more freely than before. Because y'all is the worst motherfuckers I've ever tried to entertain in my fucking life. With this comeback, Dave went from a great comedian to one of the best comedians of all time. Dave, in my opinion, you're the GOAT. Dave reclaimed stardom and was now using his fame to affect politics. Hi, I'm Chris Tucker. I'm Jackie Chan. I'm just kidding. I'm Dave Chappelle, and this is the guy I want to be president, Andrew Yang. Dave was now back, and his influence was bigger than ever. His courage meant he wasn't afraid to take on anyone or anything. If it's one thing that the L's and the G's agree on, is that the B's are f***ing gross. They seem greedy to the L's and the G's, you know what I mean? Cause they're just sitting in the back seat like, yeah, man, I'll f anybody in this car, what's going on, man? Dave's extensive experience deepened his understanding of the art beyond any other comedian, allowing him to tell the most captivating stories. This woman was trans when I met her. Lived in San Francisco, Daphne Dwarman. And, and I called her myself. I said, hey, Daphne, this is Dave Chappelle. She couldn't believe it. And I go, I'm in San Francisco. And then she started saying a bunch of wild stuff. I was like, relax, I don't, I don't want any pussy. I was, um... Dave's mastery of comedy begins with his unparalleled understanding of the craft. His timing is impeccable. I was calling because I'm doing a show and I, I, I need an opening act. 
And I was wondering if you'd open the show. And she was like, yeah. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but, but this woman had only done stand-up comedy eight times in her life. This is little to no experience. And, and now she's about to open a show for, for what many call the GOAT. His delivery is flawless. He keeps it real and speaks his mind. She showed up early, which is something I appreciate because I like people to be on time. She was dressed to the motherfucking nines. I mean, I'm transphobic and even I was like, you look nice. His ability to connect with the audience is unmatched. All them questions that you think about that you'd be afraid to ask, I was just asking them and she was answering them and her answers were funny as shit. The crowd was falling out of the chairs. And then I told the crowd good night and they start going crazy. And before the applause gets to its crescendo, I say, and don't forget my opening act, Daphne. And the crowd stood up and I looked at her and tears came out of her eyes. She couldn't believe it was happening. I couldn't believe it was happening because her show stunk. He captivates the minds of crowds and carefully depicts his stories. When Sticks and Stones came out, a lot of people in the trans community were furious with me and apparently they dragged me on Twitter. I don't give a fuck because Twitter's not a real place. <laughs> she wrote a tweet that was very beautiful and what she said was, he doesn't punch up, he doesn't punch down, he punches lines and he's a master at his craft. That's what she said. This fosters a connection and sense of intimacy that's rare in the modern world of comedy. Six days after that wonderful night I described to you, my friend Daphne killed herself. She always says she identified as a woman. And then one day she goes up to the roof of a building and jumps off and kills herself. Clearly, only a man would do some gangster shit like that. Chappelle's descriptive ability is another hallmark of his greatness. He has an ability to make each member of the audience see what he's imagining. She was a comedian in her soul. Your daughter is very young, but I hope to be alive when she turns 21, because I'm going to give her this money myself. But I'll tell that little girl, young lady, I knew your father. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a wonderful woman. Despite this emotive and captivating story, some people were enraged by it, and one crazy guest at one of his next shows took it to the next level. Make some noise for hip hop history. Dave even enraged some Netflix employees who were so upset by his words that they organized a walkout. This is Dave. He tells jokes for a living. But some Netflix employees don't think Chappelle's jokes are very funny. But this did not stop Dave. They must have forgotten who they were dealing with because to this day, Dave still speaks his mind about controversial topics. It started when someone told Chappelle to shut up after he said he didn't think people should lose their jobs for supporting Palestinians. Chappelle reportedly responded by criticizing the Israeli government's decision to cut off food, water, and electricity to Gaza. He also accused Israel of killing innocent civilians. So it's safe to say Dave Chappelle is the greatest comedian of all time. I can't even judge R. Kelly. First of all, we don't know if these allegations are true or not, and even if they are true, if you want to know how I feel about it honestly, if a man cannot pee on his fans, I don't want to be in show business anymore because, well, that's why I got in the game, baby. I got dreams too. He did not allow money, fame, or success to stop him from speaking his mind. He's the definition of having principles and honoring them. But we must not forget this comedian is great too. Click here to watch.